Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson, and today I am going to show you something fun. And I've told you all about this numerous times. I say it all the time when I make my textures that they make great backgrounds for your digital paintings. So I thought I'd show you in Procreate how I do this, just kind of quickly. Not really a full class or tutorial, but I thought you'd like to see what I do. First thing I'm gonna do is set up a square canvas, 6,000 by 6,000, because I already know that's the size I want. That is my favorite size canvas. So I've got this one layer set up, and I am going to insert a photo of Ollie. Now, Ollie is my favorite owl. She and I are big buddies, and she poses for me really nice. The photo's not big enough, so I'm just going to enlarge it because I'm going to do a little sketch over top of this. So I've got the photo on layer one, and I'm adding a new layer on top. And I think I'll go with my sketch brush. It doesn't matter what brush you use as long as you can sketch with it. Uh, it needs to be kind of small profile. You don't really want to use a really huge brush. But um, I've got this new layer open, and I've picked a sort of a dark gray shade there. And I'm going to go to her layer and uh, choose the opacity to lower it down. So I'll be able to see where I've sketched. And this doesn't have to be... I'm not going to sketch out every feather. I'm going to sketch out just the basics of this and make sure I'm on the right layer. Let's rename that. Sketch. So I'm just going to see if I need to resize the brush down a little bit. And I like using this brush. And she's got a couple of catch lights there. So the brush is a little big to get around those, but I'm going to try to leave those in place to show myself I need to put a white, little white catch light dot there. And I will darken the eyes more on this sketch because they're pretty dark anyway. I'm going to leave this catch light here. Two catch light, double catch light, I guess you would call it. Go around the eye. Darken that a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then get her beak here. And then kind of in the darker areas on the photo, I just want to make some markings there. And I'll skip around here and go back to the eye. There's a little dark rim around here with a little white in between but I'm not going to make the painting exact like every little feather uh, that's not the point the point is to do a painting I don't want it to be an exact replica of the photo because I might as well just keep the photo and I could blend the photo with the texture I do that all the time but I like painting my subjects and I, I often paint my photos. That's what I teach in my Skillshare classes. But I also like to actually do a full painting. So I'm just kind of making marks in the, the darkest areas. And I can make this brush a little bit bigger now just to get these dark areas going. And I'm not gonna do every dark area, just the ones where it kind of shapes her. Shapes her face to show the roundness. And anywhere where it's pretty dark, I want to remember when I'm painting it to make sure to go pretty dark. I'm zoomed in pretty good, so I'm going to zoom out. I think I am. There we go. And I'm just really loosely doing this. 
because I'm not going to like super accurately capture every little bit. So I'm just kind of moving around trying to shape out the the feathers and where the markings are. And this is all pretty dark in here, so I'm just going to quickly make some marks there. Now, Ollie is a barred owl. And barred owls have a bar-like pattern through their fur. Lots and lots of markings fur in their feathers. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I was working on an animal portrait earlier. And that got me thinking about fur. But they have a lot of uh, bar, like around this top of the head here. You can see the, the lines. And then also on their chest. They have a lot of bar type markings. See these down here? Bars going downward. Up here is bars going across. I'm just trying to get this dark color in those areas where the feathers are darker. Just to kind of show where they are. Here's the wing, and she's got this really dark area right here where the wing separates from the rest of the body. And the wing is pretty dark because it's got the browns in it. And she's got a little separation here because she's got her feathers raised up right there. I'm just going to kind of sketch around that. Now this area of the wing, if you look at this and you squint, you can see that it's brown with white squares, kind of like triangular squares, something like that. Now I don't need to draw all those, but I do want to, she's got a couple feathers right here, wing feathers that are longer and a little darker area down here. So I kind of want to shade in some of that and I mean there's no set way to do this this is just kind of how I do it I want to outline this little white feather area okay now let me turn off the sketch and look at there we've got a good beginning sketch which I can just leave off the photo reference layer now because I'm going to pick my own colors but what I would like to do is I would like to bring in a texture underneath. Now, because she's the sketch is on its own layer, if you shut off the background, that's transparent. So if I bring a texture in here underneath her, then we'll see what that does. Now, I brought in a few from the new Texture Scapes collection. These are very heavy landscape kind of abstract textures and you can kind of see here's three of them I've brought in because I like the tones in them and I like the paint marks and I'm really looking at this one here so I'm going to bring that in and as you can see it's not shaped the same as my canvas now you, when I go to blend things with these texture scapes that are kind of abstract landscape, really thick paint textures, it's tempting to just use it as it is and use the whole thing, but you don't need to do that. And I like to use parts of it. And I really like this blue in here and this cream at the top right there. So um, I'm going to just select that layer and squeeze it up until I get and kind of move it around until I might see where I might like it to be and how big I really like those heavy 
paint marks in there. And I like those colors. I'm just going to tap that. That's a good starting point right there. Now that's underneath her. So her sketch now shows up on top of that. So I, I want to go back to the sketch layer because I want to blend some of these marks out and start actually making it look more painterly. So I'm going to go to another one of my brushes, which is an oil brush. And you can use any oil brushes you want to do something like this. But I this one works good as a blender, so I'm just going to... Uh, start going over some of these marks so they're not so black and kind of blend them out to give her that dimension that she needs to form her shape but I don't really need it to be like super dark and like it was so by blending it out I can kind of create her shape and smooth things around and get an idea of the shape of her head and face and body without having these sketchy marks in there. Nothing wrong with some sketchy marks remaining. Let me work on this eye a little bit. I'm going to lower that brush size because I don't want it to be too big. And I'm just going to blend this around remembering to leave the area where the catch light should be because that's what brings her to life but then as i get further away from the catch light i can enlarge that brush and sort of blend out this eye so it doesn't look so scratchy I really like the the way this is looking on top of this texture. Let's squeeze that down. I see the difference. Her eye almost starting to look rounded now. I don't want to lose too much of the the darker color, but I will darken that some more as I work on this. I'm going to go to this eye. And once again, be careful of those catch light areas. So just to recap here, I am, I've done my sketch, which is on its own layer. So it's got transparent background. And, uh-oh, I've lost a catch light. Back that up. Make that brush a little smaller. So I've done the sketch. It's on its own layer. And I've placed a texture underneath. And you can do this with any of the textures I have available. But this is, I always say, you can do your digital paintings on top of these textures. And I realized I really hadn't done many examples of that. And the nice thing about using a texture is when you go to paint, that texture can become part of your painted design in the end and it has the nice texture in this case the thick paint which i really like which adds to the rich painterly look of these images now let's look at that back that out i could probably blend this corner of the eye down some and up some give it a little more dimension in here blend it out some it's a little more gray now but like I said I'll darken the eyes some more as I go along let's get around this nose and by blending you can actually give the look of feathers too like a little finer look without having to draw each feather
kind of help shape things a little better too. I do know that needs to be darker under that nose area because I blended it a little too much. Let's go and blend out some of this, these other marks. Like I said, you don't have to blend every mark. You can leave some of the sketchy look if you like it. There's no rules in this. And that's what I like. No rules. I don't play by the rules. I like to create my own way of doing things. Some people say, oh, that's not the way to do it. They don't like it. Whatever. I mean, the whole point here is for me to get creative on my own and do things the way I want to do them. And I often do things backwards. Like if somebody teaches me how to do something, I do things backwards. If they say go right, I go left kind of thing. That's just me. Or they say do this first, I don't do that first. I'll do it last. I don't know. I guess there's so much of people these days just wanting to do what somebody else does. And I don't know. I just, I'd like to just find my own way to do it, if that makes any sense. And that's why I'm saying you don't have to do what I'm doing here. I'm just showing you how I'm doing it. But you can do it this way or something similar to this or totally different than what I'm doing. The, the end, it's, how, it's just how you get to your end result that you're happy with. And a lot of people have trouble with that. They don't know what they're happy with. They think if it looks just like something I've done or something somebody else done, then that makes them happy. But is that really you? I mean... I, I took a class one time, one of my favorite classes, and it's um, it's a lady who teaches about painting in bold colors, and she uses extremely bold colors, and like if she wanted to paint this owl in purple and green, you know, she would do that, and I haven't been able to get quite that free. I try to stick with colors that are close, but I do tend to use very saturated colors. Sometimes. Notice her taking shape now. I'm go with a little bit bigger brush. Get this fly away feather here on top. Uh, I'll probably have to reshape re that with more paint later. There's a few little dark areas down here at the bottom that I need to keep that darkening there on that bottom. And that's part of the reason I put the darker part of this texture down there on the bottom and I can go with a little bigger brush and even blend this out a little more to shape that upper part and then and I'm just going every which way with the with the uh, apple pencil I don't go I, well, I try to paint feathers in the direction they're going but I've also learned it's quite fun not to do that so if I paint, if it's going down, downward like this and, a, and I paint one sideways like this, so what? We got an interesting shape there. I probably should have saved the sketch or duplicated that layer first, but I didn't. And I can always go back and look at the reference photo again. In fact, I'm going to move that up to the top and turn that layer on and full opacity just so I can see what what's going on here I, I like to start with the eyes and there's this turquoise blue color in that texture 
down here. But I kind of like to bring that into the eyes a little bit. And of course the nose is this golden yellow and she's got a little bit of that's actually blood on the tip of her nose because she had had something to eat but it's kind of a terracotta color and I kind of like that little bitty color right there for maybe in through the uh, wing area I'd like to bring a color like that in to where her browns are because that's more of a saturated boosted color the time you combine that terracotta with this uh, turquoise blue color, those two colors are my favorite together, orange and blue. Of course, it's not really orange. It's more of a terracotta I'm thinking of. But let me just get a little of this turquoise blue in the eyes, and I'm going to just hold down on there to pick it. But I'm going to go more to the right and actually a little darker on the color wheel pull it down and I'm going to go with my just plain oil brush it's a square brush which I like to paint these subjects that have a more abstract loose painterly look with a square brush I'm on the wrong layer see I tried to paint on this layer I need to be on the the sketch layer which is now the painting layer but I'm going to get some of that turquoise in there and then of course the eyes are very dark so I'm going to pull that even down darker and get a little bit more dark of that shade in there in the eye as well and then I'm going to go even darker almost to black and bring some of that in. I'm just kind of tapping little marks in because I'll be blending these all together. But those eyes need to be super dark. But I do like having the bits of color in there. be a little dark at the top too around that rim to set them in really good hey <clears throat> you don't have to blend this I've done it both ways where I've blended some and then just put paint down and didn't blend it I do know if you look back at this top layer she's got these little highlight rims around the eyes and um, over top of the eyes there and around the bottom of the eyes. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Trying to leave a little highlight rim there. And how did I get that there? No idea. I guess my hand moved in. I'm just going to undo, double tap, and undo to get that. Oh, gosh, how far back did I do that? There. All right, make sure I'm on the right layer, and let's add some of this uh, darkness again around there, around those eyes. I'm just doing this real loose and real fast. And around this nose area, this needs to be darker. So I'm going to bring that dark color in there too. I'm, basically, I'm just kind of scribbling. And I'll blend some of this scribbling out. See, and every time I go to squish it, squish it. I end up making an accidental mark. All right, let me blend some of that out because it's looking a little bit strong. So back to the blending brush, which I'm using this, this one here. And I'm just going to work on blending some of that out. 
But this is how I will do a whole painting. I about lost that catch light. I did lose it. it. Means I need to put it back in. I need to get this area of turquoise darkened up just a little by pulling from the black area into the turquoise area. And I gotta fix that catch light too, where I messed that up. That's easy with a little dot of white. I know where it's supposed to be. I think I've done the same thing here on this eye. But I know that they're supposed to be in there. See, I'm blending that turquoise with the black now on the eye on the right side of the canvas. And I just work really fast and really loose and not concerned with anything right now except getting color down and her shape in and actually letting that underneath texture become part of her design. If I see something I like in there, I let it stay in there. And I go different directions with my brush strokes to give it that abstract look. It's bugging me that catch light's not there, so I'm gonna go grab white. And I'm gonna go back to that little sketch brush. And I'm gonna put a dot. It doesn't have to be a double catch light. But I think it looked a little better as a double up here on this one anyway. I'm not sure about that one. Let me blend that out just a little bit with the blending brush. So it's not such a strong white. And I'm sorry if you hear lawn equipment, but I can't seem to have any quiet here where I live. It is my biggest gripe ever. Let me get this rim in here a little better too while I'm at it. It is my biggest gripe ever. I love my house. I hate where it is. Because there's always somebody making noise with lawn equipment outside my house. And I like to sit here with the door open and listen to the birds singing. And when I can't do that, it just drives me insane. I have literally been looking for a place to move for the last four years. And I found several things, but unfortunately, my budget didn't fit in with those things. Okay, let's see where I'm at. Okay, I think the catch light in the left eye is still a little too strong, so I need to maybe blend that down just a little bit. Now let's look. Ah, that might be close enough for now. I can always adjust it later. Make the blending brush a little bigger and blend out some more of this dark that I added in around that nose to shape out that nose. I need to do the nose next because getting that yellow, yellowish color in there is really going to help. So, we know the nose is this yellowish color and it happens to be a beautiful yellowish color here in the background. So you don't have to be on the background layer to select that. You can just hold down 
somewhere in here where you want it to be and that looks like a good color and when you let go it changes your color wheel to that color make sure you're on the right paintbrush I can't remember if, I guess I was still on sketch but I need to be on just this other oil brush right now if I can get a little bit bigger with the brush of course I still need to get in here form this point so there's that pretty yellow color but it looks kind of it's not dimensional so when we turn this on we can see if we look at that that there down the middle of this there is a highlight area and down on the bottom edges it's a darker area so in order to make that more three-dimensional we need to do the same thing so let's turn that off so let's go darker first. Let's go darker down here on the bottom and put some of that in around these edges and where it meets the feathers. Now, let's choose the yellow again, but this time we wanna go lighter to pull it over and up and put a lighter area in there. Now let's try to blend that Go whichever way you want to with the blending. Trying to pull that yellow over the dark. So it'll blend with it pretty good. Now let's look at it. Now it looks a little bit more three dimensional now. Probably could go back and add some more of that yellow in. And if you look at the history down here under the color wheel, the, the one you just used should be there. I'm going to tap a few marks of that in there. Just to bring a little bit more back in. And then blend that a little bit. Doesn't all have to be blended. I do want the beak to form a nice point, so I'll push with the blending brush down here on this bottom, push that in just a little bit. And you can scrub with this, hold it down and scrub, or you can just do short strokes which I tend to do the short strokes a lot. Do I need it a little darker at the top of the beak? Let's look at the initial image and there is some dark lines in here that help set those feathers off. And I don't have that here. So let me go back to this black and let's get the sketch brush, very small, and just kind of put couple little marks around the top and this side too. Now let me try to blend those in a little bit. That blending brush might be a little big. I don't want to blend them completely out. This is at a point where I leave a little sketchy mark to indicate those feathers. And there are some lighter feathers coming later. But I won't paint every feather. I just kind of fool with it and shape it as I see fit. Now let's zoom out. So she's making quite a fun image. And if you turn off the background, you can see a little bit better. But I want the background to become a part of her. So I think I'm ready to bring in some of that terracotta color I mentioned that's on the tip of her nose in here. 
So with that layer turned on, I'm just going to select it, hold down till I get to it, let go. It's there now. And I need to make sure I'm still on the sketch layer. And I can see my miniature when I look at the layers here. If you look at it, you know, real far away and you kind of squint, you can kind of see where your colors need to go. So if you look at the layer with her original photo, you can see that a big portion of the middle of the top of her head, uh, the middle all the way to the top of her head, plus the wing, and some in her neck area is that terracotta. So I'm going to use the oil brush, turn off that layer, and we're going to start maybe down here where I'd already put some dark and kind of mark out some of that wing and in the areas where I'd already put the darker color get some of that terracotta in there and I can always tap on my layers and get another look at the reference photo and there's a pretty good bit of the brown in through here so I think I'm going to put some of that in there. Just, I'm not trying to follow her pattern exactly. I'm just trying to get some of it in there to shape her. And then, of course, there's that spot at the top of her head down in through here. And it kind of comes down right over this middle part. And she's got a little brown right here. I just keep tapping on it to look at the um, photo far away as a small image here on the layers panel. That helps me to get a look at it and without having to say copy it exactly. Now there's the the ring around the eyes. If you notice that in the photo, where it comes down like this. And then there's this one, where it comes like this. And I'll just keep tapping on this till So basically, pretty much where I've put the dark areas, you see her taking shape even a little bit more now. Now, I don't want to blend too much of that out, but I do want to blend it some. So I'm going to go to the blending brush, mess with the size of it a little bit, and just kind of gently blend some of this. I don't want to lose everything completely especially that background. And those areas where I was real dark, I just want to get some of that color in there to shape things. Uh, I am no way working on detail at this point. This is all just shaping things out and and I could have done this on a separate layer. It, like, say, if you're doing shadows and you're doing highlights. You know, some people do those on a separate layer. I'm kind of like a one-layer painter because I like to paint on the iPad just like I like to paint in real life. Ooh, I like that little sweep I did over the eye there. She's got some nice little shape going on there. Let's blend some of this out even further up top. Both directions. All right. She's taking shape. 
the left eye where I drew this, oops, where I drew this little, I blended out this little eyebrow here. If you look at that, that's not like that. So I'm going to go back to the black and go back to that sketch brush and actually not the sketch brush, my oil brush. Oops, that's too big. And I'll use a variety of different brushes. I tend to stick with one brush set um, when I'm doing a painting, but sometimes I'll dip into other brush sets and I have a million of them. I've bought them. I've got free ones. You just, you can't have enough brushes. This eye needs to be more rounded, so I'm going to blend some of that out a little. And kind of come in a little tighter on that eye. There we go. Oops. What have I done? Oops. I've picked a color. I didn't intend to pick. I need to get back to my blending brush here. And at some point you can stop looking at the reference photo. But it does help me to see where the, where the breakdown of the colors are. And seeing it real small like this makes me stay away from getting too detailed, which I don't want to get too detailed. I'm gonna go back to this terracotta color. And there's a little in here that I think needed to be added of that color. Got a pretty little artistic look going on here with the owl right now. With those interesting colors in the background. I think the beak needs a little bit more highlight definition. So I'm going to go back to that yellow, but I'm going to pull it more to the white. And put a little streak right there. Oops. There. Just a couple little marks. And I think I'm going to leave those. I don't think I'm going to blend those out. I do think there needs to still be some darker edging there, though. So I'm going to grab the yellow that's there, and I'm going to go a little darker and put a few marks. And I think I need to go even darker. Now I may blend those out a little. I'm trying to leave that white highlight I added alone. I can't seem to squeeze this in or out without making a mark. Okay, that's looking kind of fun. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and step away from it and then come back and look at it again and decide what I want to do next. Okay. Please excuse my stomach if you hear it growling. You might hear that on here. Okay, and looking at the little reference image here, I need to go darker around the bottom edge of this wing. So this, I was on the terracotta, so I selected that again. I'm going to get a darker shade of that and bring in some of that. Let's get a little bigger brush going. Some of that in there. 
to help um, frame out this wing a little bit better. And of course, it's going to be darker at the bottom. So we'll just go ahead and put some dark, quick little dark marks in there. And also up here where this feather is kind of fly away, it's kind of dark right there underneath that to show that curve of her face. And then let's get some of that dark over here on the side as well. All right, now I'm gonna blend it. Blend it out a little bit. Move some of those colors around. I'm gonna bring it right down into that blue area. Back and forth over in there and down this wing. I'm probably going to have to put some more black down here at the bottom of this wing because it's uh, it's just not dark enough yet. Let's get this top part. Show that roundness right there. Bring some of that color down over that texture and just kind of messily messily is that a word moving all around and i think i got a little too high there so i'm gonna blend that down top of the wing area let's go even darker now so i'm pulling it to an even darker shade and going to make some little marks in the darkest of the dark areas. And there's a few little wing marks right here. Now blend. So I put down a little paint, I blend a little, I put down a little more, I blend some more. If I take away too much, I'll just bring back that other color with some marks. Like the terracotta let's go back to that and let's bring some of those marks up in here and then blend that around a little don't blend it out completely get some of this blended over here on this other side because i didn't blend any of that All right, let's zoom out. Well, I've selected a color. Every time I put my thumb on there, I select a color. Now, I've got her wing a little bit oddly shaped there at the very top where it's curved. So, I'm going to use the blending brush, but a little smaller. And I'm going to try to blend that down a little more. There we go. And then this, that top feather is more of a terracotta right there. It's got a little white on it, lighter shade. So I might leave some of that in there and I'll, I'll refine that even more. Let's maybe go ahead and do that. No, I went a little bit too crazy there. So I put a few marks down. I blend a little bit. Anything I don't like because this is on its own layer, I could erase if I wanted to and bring back the initial texture underneath.
fix that wing a little bit. I think it's time to bring some of the white into the wing, the, the marks, the bar marks, barred owl marks. That highlight on the nose, that shade is sort of a, in the yellow family, see? It's in the yellow. It's in almost white. I'm going to try to make some marks with that. Let me see if I want to use a different brush. Now, the brush I'm using is pretty smooth. It doesn't really have much of a texture at this point. But at some point, I do like to bring textured brushes in, like stuff with the canvas texture, and I have some textural paint brushes. Those can get kind of... Um, what's the word? Unpredictable. So when I start doing that, I do like to add another layer. And I do want to use my textural brush, this one. Because this one has some really neat texture. Just when you drag it kind of slow. And it's got some really fun texture and I'm just making some haphazard marks here and there to give her that patterned look and if it's too big make it smaller look at the reference photo again up here. Now these, I don't usually blend out. I'll usually leave the textured ones alone, but you can blend them. This front of this wing is really bugging me still, so I'm glancing at the photo a little bit, and it, it looks like it's got some little short marks there. And even here, she's got some just little short marks through there on top of those feathers. And the top, as you get further away and as she has a curve, the marks will be shorter. Now that's given her some fun marks. And of course, she has the same coloring on her belly and neck area. And these I do tend to go in the direction that the feathers are going. So if they're going at a curve around the neck, I tend to do that to curve it. And then down here, she's got the straight bars that come down. And when you drag, this textural brush is fun because it's so unpredictable. Sometimes you make a mark and it barely does anything. And if you press harder, it'll do a harder mark. But I'm wanting this to be a really loose, abstract piece. And somehow I got a mark there. And she's got a lot of the white coloring around this face area. She's got two pretty distinct white marks here around the eyes that come up. And then she's got a pretty good one here in that curve and there. And then even in here, now here I'll drag it a little lighter so it'll leave more speckles rather than a solid mark. I mean, it may leave a solid mark, but it's got more of the speckle texture in there. And I'm doing this on a top layer, so if I don't like it, I can reduce the opacity of it, erase it. And then she's got this 
this is definitely more in shadow here. So I'm just doing it very lightly to leave a lot of that blue-gray color in there on this side. Seeing if, let me, um, let me zoom out and turn that off and on. See how that has just brought her to life a little bit? That's really fun. And I think she needs a little bit more darker color around the top of the base area. So, underneath, back to the sketch layer and back to my regular oil brush. I'm going to pick this darker brownish black here. It's in the brown family. And I'm going to enhance the darkness in these areas here. And this is underneath the lighter layer. So when I go to blend it, it will be underneath the lighter spots that I made with the textured brush. I think she even needs a little bit of that brown around the eye as well. And anywhere there's shadow, she needs some of that darker brown but especially right here, around the top of these eyes. And around her outer edge, too. Let's bring some of that in there. Now let me go to blend that. Blend some of that out. So it's not so strong. It's all under the white area, so or the creamy white, I should say. It's not stark white. I like to use a white in the shade of a color that's already in the image. tends to do a little bit better harmony when you do that. Because if you're painting with warm colors and then you go with a really cool shade of, say, a white, it, I don't know, it just stands out a little different than I like. I think we need a little bit of the dark in here. And then blend it. But I really like the look, the texture background is giving this. Still working on blending some of that out. I'm a little too dark. The area under her beak is too dark. It's too black. It's subtly dark in the initial photo. So I'd like to 
bring a little bit color in there. And I think I need a little dark right there. So I'm going to put a little dark there. But I'm going to bring a lighter color in here of this shade. So I'm picking it. It's sort of that blue green, but I'm going to go more to the gray and dot some of that in there. So it's not such a stark difference. I even bring some of that up in here, up into the other parts of the image. It's just fun to put those unpredictable colors where you don't expect them. And that's pretty fun. I may not even blend much of that. Blend a little bit right here. And there. Well, look how fun that is. That's pretty cool. Now look, if you turn off the texture layer underneath, you can see the actual image. And at any time, you can turn off everything and just say, save this as a PNG or whatever. And you can also put the texture, copy that and put it on top and give it a little bit of a different look as well. Or you can pull another texture on top. You can even, if you wanted to, add a new layer underneath her and bring in one of the other textures, like say this one. And try to see what that looks like underneath her. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool. And you can turn these around when you play with them to give a different look. You can flip them upside down. You can do whatever you want. That that one actually is kind of interesting. And you can push them, push them where you want. Hey, I kind of like that. So, that's the previous texture. This is the new one I brought in. Interesting. Look how it changes the look, though, when you do that. And that's part of the fun about working with textures. And you can even lower, like, put two together by lowering the opacity of one on top of the other. Which actually is kind of looking cool here to do that. Now, what I don't like, I'll turn it off and on to see what I do like and what I don't like. What I don't like about this one is it has a mark right here under the eye that I don't particularly like, but that's where you can mask on that texture layer. You can mask it away. So if you tap on it and click mask, it puts your layer mask on there, and then you want to paint with black. If you double tap at the bottom of your color wheel on whatever color you're on, it'll go to black. And just pick any paintbrush, and you can come in here and remove that, but because it's a mask, look at that. That's kind of neat. Because it's a mask, you can turn it off and on. And you can turn the whole thing off and on to see if there's anywhere else you want to mask. Like right here, it's, I'll just mask some of, some of that right there. Let me turn it off and on. And it's put some up here. Around that eye. I kind of like the eye the way it was. But I'm just kind of masking that away. Now I do think that eye is a little bit too dark. Around the eye. So I need to bring in a color. I'm thinking what about this shade? And this is from the texture. It's sort of a light gray. What about if I brought that in with, I wonder what it would look like with a canvas brush. Let me try that. I like to try different textural brushes. And I'm going to put this as an, on a new layer on top of that, in case I don't like it. Well, somehow I got back to the cream. So let me undo those. Let me pick this color again. That's the color I want. It's sort of a, 
a greenish gray to soften that up around there because I think the eye got a little bit too dark. And I, it, I can actually bring this into different areas of the painting to give it some unique, different texture throughout. And I'll just kind of work around and tap and do this uh, in different spots. And it, I can do this, turn it off and on to see what I think of it. I still think I need more of it through here. But by adding that in, it's bringing some of the background texture into the bird's body. I mean, it's bringing some of the color, not the texture. It's bringing the texture from the brush into the bird's body in some different spots where I'm placing it. And it's kind of fun. It gives you a really dynamic and energetic piece when you use brushes with different textures. I'd like to do that same thing with this brown right here where I got a little bit too much of the green. What else can I do here? This is how I do things. Basically, I sit here and play until I get something I like. And I'll refer back to the initial photo. And see, she's got a lot of little pokey feathers here by her beak. But I'm not painting that detail. And I don't really need to. But I could if I wanted to put a few little marks in there. In fact, where those little pokey feathers are, let me pick a color. Um, and I'll just roll, oh, that's kind of neat, that golden color. I'll just kind of roll around until I find something. Here's a bristles brush. I can't remember how this does. And I'll try, see, that's that layer. I'm going to put another new layer on top. Now, this is after I told you I usually paint on just one layer. I do until I get to the end. Once I get more toward the end, I tend to experiment a little more. So I put those on different layers in case I don't like them. This is a bristles brush. I just want to see what it does. So this brush makes a mark like that. Well, that might work for some little feather marks through here. Maybe. I don't know if I've got it too thick. Uh, I'm not going to paint every feather. Just get some marks in there. And crisscrossy marks. I'm just going to integrate some of this around. And I'll use the same brush and that same color that I just picked to put it in different spots. Because that's what adds that interest throughout. It gives the eye something to look at as it moves around the painting. Bring some of that texture and color around. I'm going to even go with a little darker shade here and kind of come up here on a couple of these. And this is all just, where do I think this mark might look good kind of thing. That little flyaway feather at the top of her body didn't come out very well, but do I need it to, or do I want to do something different? Another thing I often do is I will use stamp brushes to create interesting paint effects 
at the end. So let me add another new layer and let's go pick uh, some stamps. I've got an abstract stamp set I made here. And I just like to find random stamp brushes that I like. This might work to make that fun feather. It's not really long enough, but it could be. But I'd like a different color. How about if I pull this fun greenish color in? No, maybe the blue. Let's. Uh, there's a little blue right here. That's sort of a blue-gray. No, how about this one? It's even lighter. Sort of a greenish gray. Eh, I'm not finding the color I want. How about this? That's sort of a greenish blue gray, and it's kind of bright. And I made the stamp mark, and it's on its own layer, so I can manipulate it. So let's say I want to turn it around, and I want to stretch it out and squish it and turn it some more. Let's make it even skinnier. Oh, let's flip it. Then turn it. And I can drag it and place it where I want. And I kind of like how that did on the top. Let's make it a little skinnier. Let me zoom in so I can move it. I kind of like how it did on the top. What if I change the layer mode on that to darken, multiply. Let me zoom out so I can see how I'm going to like it. Okay, that's multiply. That's darken. That's too bright. Lighter color. Hmm, that may work. And that's just a stamp brush that I've manipulated and picked a color. Let me take, let me put a mask on that. Go to black. Double tap on the color wheel. Down by the black and it will go to black. Go back to my oil palette and that bristles brush. And I'm actually going to mask with that to get part of that taken out. So it helps. It basically helps to blend it in. But it, I kind of like that little edging it gave right there. So if I turn it off and on, you can see it gave it some interesting little mark and edging. And I'll put other stamp marks in sometimes really big over something, over an area. So let me go to my abstract set again and pick well let's see let me go to I'm not finding what I want favorite stamps I do like these watercolory type stamps but they don't really fit with the thick paint although this one here is one of my favorites and I make it super big and can put it wherever I want oh I happen to like that right there that's pretty cool what if I take that brown color and pick a more watery looking stamp and st oh no that's terrible how about a gold color? Still terrible. How about a really light gold color? Mm, no. I think I'll leave that alone. In fact, I, I like everything here now that I've done. And I will now 
squeeze all my layers together. So, because my layers are getting out of control there. So, there's my original photo of Ollie. And here is my little, on the spur of the moment, fun Friday painting I did of her that I wanted to be really abstract and textural and interesting with one of those new texture scape backgrounds. And I didn't even use it as a landscape like I intended. But I really do like the paint marks that are in those and they really help my painting here that I've done on the iPad look more painterly, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's a really fun image. I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer to sign it. And I do I decide what color I want to sign it in. I do like this greenish color here. And I usually go to an oil brush, pencil brush, or sketch brush, but usually the pencil type brushes. And just stick my signature on there, and it's really not bright enough. I think I'd like to go a little lighter on the color. No, that's not going to work either. Where did my layer go? I lost it. Okay, how about if I pick maybe this shade and sign it. And I usually, because I do my signature on its own layer, I usually do like to make that smaller. And I don't want to pick free form. I want to pick uniform. So to keep it organized and in order and in the same uniform look. Now that I've, I've resized it, so now I can move it wherever I might want it. And of course, you can't see it there, so I'll move it over here. Usually bottom right corner is where I sign. And I don't like my signature to be really obtrusive, but I do like my name to be on there. So look at that. How fun is that? And I'll squeeze those together. So there's the original photo I started with, with the sketch on top of the texture, and there's that. Uh, does it look just like the original photo? No. If I wanted something that looked just like the original photo, I would have used the original photo. I would have blended it with the texture. I wanted an abstract, loose, fun, painterly, cool-looking owl image. And... The fact that you can do these on top of these texture backgrounds, it just, it helps to enhance them and make them look even more fun and painterly. So that's what I really like about doing this. And this is what I mean when I say in a lot of my wording on the website, you'll see me say that these are great backgrounds for uh, your digital paintings. Because you can do this, which is a digital painting, right on top of whatever textures you choose and get a totally cool, fun look for your digital painting that somebody else won't have or won't even be able to get with just using Procreate as it is because they may not have the texture background. Um, and it gives your art that uniqueness and interesting effects to it when you do this. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. It's, it's really not meant to be a tutorial, but just to show you how I do things. And like I said, you can use any brushes in whatever way you want to use them when you do something like this. So I hope you guys will experiment with trying that if you have Procreate or you can even do it in Photoshop or Paint, uh, not Paint Shop Pro. Uh, what's the other one? Corel Painter. You can do it in Corel Painter too. You just have to load in the texture background underneath your sketch layer and start painting on top of all of that and allow some of that texture background to show through as I've done here. I don't paint every little bit, just allow it to show through. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed it and thanks as always for watching. I hope you have a great day.